so that we will run this meeting on time. I will raise the green pepper when the speech is long enough according to your project requirement. For example, one minute and 30 seconds for table topics and six minutes for prepare the speech. Yellow pepper will be raised when speakers should be aware on their, of their time is running up, running up a red pepper when the loud time is finished. Hi, Steve. Good evening. Can you hear me? I can't hear of you. Now you are on mute. What happened now? Yes, okay. Okay, <laughs> good. This is my first time to join here. Welcome. Hi, my Luca. Name is Hi, Hi, Luca. Hello. Hello. Oh. How are you? Hey, good, I'm, thanks. I'm good too, and thanks. Good, good. You? I'm Flora, actually. Um, my, uh, I still see <laughs> Trojan speaker as my name. I still don't know how to change this, uh, but I'm, I'm the Flora. president of the club. Yes, Flora. Um, okay, nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Um, hi, Enrique. Hello. Hi, Erika. Erica, yeah, hello. My name is Steve. Uh, Luca, I just wanted to let you know that you are definitely showing color. So thanks, you... thank you. <laughs> I was in doubt because uh, I can see myself just black and white. Every oh, day. really? Yeah, I, because probably Maybe. my laptop is very old. Yeah, sorry, my connection is not very good. Hi, now we can hear you. I think, yeah, it's come and go, but now you yeah. are clear. Okay. Hi, Sumit. Hi, Sumit. Hi, Sumit. I think you are mute, Sumit. Yeah. <laughs> Sumit. Okay. I'm so sorry. Hi, everyone. Hello. I just realized. Hello. 
I saw the pictures for, uh, like um, of the yesterday's party. It, it looked great, everyone. And I it was great fun. It was yeah. great fun. Nice. Uh, you guys had a party yesterday. So because we don't meet on on face to face at the moment, so we only do meeting online um, yeah. at the moment. So we just thought for for Christmas, when of other end oh, of year okay. celebration, we do with a bit of a social. So we actually organize a social in in the place where we normally meet. Um, you know, if we were oh. not doing uh, online, so yeah, it was. Uh, it was it was quite nice to be to be there and see actually people you know face to face because there was many members that actually hadn't seen uh, face to face only only via Zoom. Um, so that was yeah really nice. How long? I think it was after uh, eighteen months or so. Of three months already. Sorry, what was the question? Stephen, did you uh, ask a question? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, uh, I was asking, um, how long you you guys didn't go to face to face meeting? Just just that. It's almost eighteen months or so. <laughs> Thirteen months. Eighteen to twenty months, I think. So since think, since wow. the start of the pandemic, we we haven't uh, gone back face to face. We are exploring that option, um, uh, targeting February if. Um, if things go well, but as you probably know, it's not sure <laughs> that <laughs> the yeah. winter will be, you know, uh, yeah, all, all smooth. So yeah, we are yeah, seeing what we can do. But it's definitely different, you know, when you are face to face in terms of, you know, um, the, the networking approach and also, yeah, meeting, you know, it's just, it's just different. You just meet people, you're not in front of your screen. Um, so it's quite nice to see the members. Yeah, Hi, yeah. Molly. Hi Molly. Hi. Hi Molly. I don't Hello. see many Christmas decoration. I thought we were having a Christmas uh, theme tonight. Okay, I wasn't aware of it. I don't have enough room. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nishta but, will be disappointed. You, you better look. That is why something. I'm wearing jumper. Christmas. Oh, jumper. you have. Yeah, you have. It's because we can't see. Maybe turn a bit. Yeah, yeah. A bit more focus on your jumper. Brilliant. <laughs> You see, you, you got the memo. I think Summit and Luca didn't, and I no. Erica and Steven. I didn't have time to change, but I've got this. Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. nice. Oh, I was nice. yeah, going to see if I could get the light and see if that would work, but. Uh, yeah. Nice. Sorry, one question for me, please. Um, mm -hmm. When there is right, just, it is written just one minute, so. Uh, I put just after one minute the red uh, card, right? Yeah, so you don't have to do that all the time. I think it's really important to do it for the speaker. Um, when you just say one minute, which, 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 uh, do you have an example? Yeah, um, Zoom master, open meeting, one minute. And... Okay, yeah, so this is more an indication. You, you don't necessarily have to track it. If okay. you see that the person is taking like five minutes, then yeah, give a sign that is 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 just taking too long, uh, but that that would just happen naturally. So the one that you really have to track are the one with the the, the speaker. So you should see. Can you see in the agenda two speakers? Yeah, yeah, you just. Um... I think mainly for the speakers and evaluations. Yeah. You should be uh, timing them. So we have two speakers, Irina and uh, I think is it Lucy, Lucy today. Lucy, yeah. Somehow it's not uh, like uh, Lucy is not appearing in this version. I yeah. don't know why. I don't have a Lucy. Um, Luca, did you look at my second um, second link? And uh, not uh, the first. Yeah. So can you look at the second link because it's not appearing in the okay. in the main one, but it's appearing in the detail detail uh, agenda. Okay. Okay. Right. So for, for the guests, we, we have an agenda. So I'm actually going to um, find a link and post it so you can see um, what, what we are talking about. Okay, now, yeah. So I can add, because I printed the, the agenda. Okay. As a, it's my first time just to have <laughs> <laughs> the things in front of me. Okay, so I put 
by pen so you have taken the physical meeting uh, like uh, a bit more seriously yesterday <laughs> <laughs> yeah right because that's the that was the last time like in i think a february 2020 that i had seen that uh, printed agenda uh, anywhere yeah because you know the, the first time uh, so i have everything printed and yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff so okay do you see it after A meeting one minute. Okay, it's a bit different to the second uh, agenda. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hi, Kamaljit. I think you're on mute. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hello. So to all the guests, have you been to any other Toastmaster uh, meetings before? Who me? Yeah, uh, like uh, all the guests, like who, uh, like who are in this meeting, like have you been oh. to any other Toastmasters? Yes, I've been. Yes. Oh, sorry, continue. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first time. Okay, that's nice. I'm too. And are you guys all local, uh, like uh, close to Ealing somewhere, or uh, are you a bit far? Yes, I'm close I'm to Ealing. Ealing. Oh, okay. I'm living in Ealing. I'm living in Ealing. Yeah. We're not too far. We're in Norwood Green, so about yeah. three miles away. That's pretty close. Yeah. And um, before COVID, did everybody used to meet? Yes. Um, okay. So before COVID, like we were all meeting uh, in a church near uh, Ealing Broadway Station. It's St. Andrew's Church. Okay, yeah. That's good. Yesterday we had a um, so, sort of a social gathering, uh, like after like 18 to 20 months. Okay. But uh, uh, that's about it. Like uh, we are thinking of going back to the church again somewhere in February. Uh, but if the circumstances permit us to do Okay. Hi, Mo. Hi, Sumed. How are you? I'm doing good, thanks. How are you? Hi, Mo. Good, thanks. Hi. Hi, Momo. Hello. Hi, Steve. Hello, Momo. What time is um, the break usually? Um, is it a set time? Really close to eight or mm -hmm. ish something. But okay. I just like um, our Toastmaster would be able to tell you a bit, uh, uh, bit more precisely. Nishta, uh, she has just joined and she is our Toastmaster for the evening. Oh, okay. What time do we normally start? Normally we start, like the formal meeting starts at 7.30. Okay. So in just about two minutes time, it is formally supposed to start. Okay. So it looks like we are missing a few key people. I think just start. Oh, 
Probably Lucy still need to try. Good evening. Hi, Lucy. Oh, brilliant. Hello. Hi, Lucy. Hello. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. So I think we are ready to start if uh, the Toastmaster is ready. Yeah, fine, Nishta, all set up? Yes, yes, I am. Sorry, I've just walked into the room uh, and made it in time for the meeting. Great. So uh, I'll start um, just as a Zoom master first. So I'm Flora. The Zoom master role is actually looking at um, what's happening online. Um, the main things that I also want to say is this meeting is recorded. So um, if you don't want to uh, appear uh, on the recording, you, you'll have to uh, go off camera. But we encourage everyone to stay on camera because it's so much nicer to, um, to see everyone's reactions and that makes the meeting more lively. But I just want to make sure you, you know that it's been recorded. Um, then I will then go to uh, start the meeting as a president and uh, welcome you all of you to be here tonight. Um, we have uh, a few guests, so that's great. Um, and hopefully you, you learn um, a lot from this meeting um, and, and can see what, what, the, what the meeting is about. Is this actually our last meeting, meeting of the year? So it's just been incredibly fast and we had had so many speeches and so many evaluation, so many table topics since uh, we had the new committee and the new committee started in July. Um, so the second half of the year have just yeah, been incredibly fast and it's nice to see all of you um, here, here tonight when actually, you know, it's very busy with, uh, with the festive season. So with that in mind, I will hand over now to uh, Nishta, I hope you have all a great time. And if you have any question, feel free as well to, to have a chat. Um, we are here as well to answer questions during the meeting via, via the chat. Thanks. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, before I start, could I please ask everybody if um, it's just, I'm wondering if it's just me or everybody had uh, Flora's audio a bit broken and um, with internet issues. I'm just making sure that it's not my connection or if it is with the, it's a problem with Zoom. Could everybody hear Flora fine? Yes. Yes, yes I can. Okay, okay then it, it sounds like it's my system. Right, and before we dive in, could I quickly check if we have one speech or two speeches? Because in agenda, I see two evaluators, but I see only one speech. We have got two speech. One is first speaker is uh, Irina. Irina and Lucy. Second speaker should be Lucy. Okay. Um, in that case, Momo, could you send us uh, a new agenda in the chat here so that everybody can see because the agenda I have shows only one speaker. And for everybody's benefit, it helps to have an updated agenda. I've just resent a link. I think yeah. the agenda is not showing fully on the main agenda, but it's, it's going, I can read it on the detail agenda. So if everyone can see, can access this link, can you see actually if you see two speakers? Now I can see in the new one. Yes, thank okay. you. Thank you yeah. for sharing. All right, let's dive in. Hello and welcome fellow Trojans and members and any other visitors from other clubs. This is our last meeting of the year. This is a small meeting and how about we keep it cozy? So today we are going to cast a glance at the year that has gone or will be gone in 22 days. So today I ask you to look back and share some of the best and the worst memories of this year from your life. If it is painful or it's distressing, please skip the bad parts, the painful parts. But if there's any lesson, any takeaway, any enduring memory or thought or person that made an impact on your life this year, we would like to hear about it. So with that, I'd like to start the meeting. 
and dive straight into the agenda. And today um, I have a team that's supporting this meeting and supporting my role. So first of all, I'd like to invite the timekeeper to come forward and explain their role. Thank Hello you. everyone, and um, thank you, Madam Toastmaster, Toastmasters of the evening, fellow Toastmasters, friends and guests. As a, time, as a timer, my role is to remind all speakers how much time they spent on their speech so that we will run this meeting on time. I will raise the green pepper when the... Um, Sorry, I lost my. Uh, when the speech is long enough, according to your project requirements, uh, for example, one minute and 30 seconds for table topics and six minutes for prepared speech. Yellow paper, when the um, well, yellow paper will be raised when speakers should be aware of, of their time is running up and red pepper when the allowed time is finished. For table topics, you should not speak more than two minutes. For prepared speech, you should not speak more than seven minutes. For all facilitators, the length over your speech is already indicated in the agenda. Um, when the speech is long enough, according to your project requirement, for example, one minute, 30 seconds for table topics and six minutes for prepared speech. Yellow paper will be raised when speaker should be aware of... No, sorry, I was repeating everything, I think. Um, at the end of the meeting, I will be back um, on the stage to present my report. Back to you, Madam Toastmasters of the evening. Just one small interjection, everyone. Um, you, you also have 30 more seconds after the red paper is shown to you. So you, you still have 30 more seconds after the red paper. Please go ahead. Thank you, Luca. Would you like to share any memory with us about any person, incident, anything that made a lasting impact on you in 2021? Uh, yeah, um, I met... Um, uh, a few persons uh, very important for me this year. Um, I'm so happy because uh, this person um, helped me, um, have helped me uh, still uh, now to, so far, to develop my, um, my, uh, myself and my career. And I'm, it was so great. And uh, so there are, like, I think, around three persons. And uh, one person in particular um, uh, around um, a bad situation was also linked to one good person. Uh, it's about one course that uh, I started in January. So in any case, I'm happy for all I reached uh, so far. Thank you, Luca. We don't have a grammarian today, but as your Toastmaster tonight, I'd like to give you a word. And that word is gratitude. The quality of being thankful for things, people, blessings in your life. So today, let's look back at 2021 and express our gratitude to things and people who have made a difference in our lives. And I'd like to see you use the word in your speeches in your performances tonight. And I'll try to remind you from time to time as well so that we can hear more about gratitude tonight. With that, we, I would like to introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker tonight is Irina. And she's giving a speech titled, Breathe, Listen, Repeat. And to evaluate Irina, we have Sumit Singh. Sumit, Please come to the stage and give us Irina's, the objectives of Irina's, uh, Irina's speech. So me. Hi, everyone. So Irina is following the motivational strategies pathways. She's doing the level three, the first project in that. 
And the purpose of this project that Irina is doing today is to cultivate an understanding of how her emotions impact relationships. It is, this project is also designed to help the member identify how other emotions impact her emotional state. The purpose of this speech is for Irina to share some aspect of his uh, of her experience journaling emotions or being aware of emotions when interacting with others. The speech is entitled Understanding Emotional Intelligence. So for the speech entitled Understanding Emotional Intelligence, I give you Irina Ursu. Also, uh, the time for her speech is between five and seven minutes. Yes. Am I starting now? Okay. Sadness, happiness. Frustration. All of us has experienced at some point in their lives one of these primary feelings when dealing with stressful situations. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I want to share an experience of how your primary feelings can change the way you see and live your life. But now, Let's have a look and take a moment to recall a stressful situation in your life. This could be anything from small to big, something, for example, as being late for a meeting, or maybe being fired from a job, or maybe being blamed for someone else's mistakes. It could be anything that you've recently find yourself in a stressful or difficult situation. So take a second to think about a moment. Now that you have the memory, can you remember how you felt? Can you remember your primary feeling that you experienced? You've been sad, you've been frustrated, angry, or maybe happy that this happened to you. What was that? Can you please identify it for yourself? Now that you know how you felt, can you remember how did you react in that situation? What did you do? How did your body react? And now that you have a clear picture and memory of what happened. Would you do something different about that? Would you react differently to that situation? Yes, if yes, please raise your hand. If not, keep your hand down. If you would do something differently, you might ask yourself, how? So in order to answer that question, please allow me to share my experience for the past two weeks. So I've been looking at my workplace and the feedback I get all the time is that I'm being very defensive in certain situations. So trying to analyze why is that happening, I found out that a couple of things are related to specific situations. Firstly, the primary feeling that I have is frustration, a real, real frustration. Secondly, how my body reacted. Well, my face getting red, by nature I'm very red, but when I'm being putting in this situation, I basically become a tomato. My face becomes a tomato. Secondly, my brain goes blank, absolutely blank. I can't find any words to express myself. And lastly, my hands, they're getting very sweaty. And when you put all of these three together, I barely can put the words 
want to each other and create a sentence. And even if I know the answers, I still find difficult to express myself. So I try to dig deeper and deeper into those situations and find out what was the real reason, what was the trigger for these reactions and how can I change it? And I came out to a conclusion. All of this happens for one reason. All of this frustration, it happens because I don't feel appreciated at my work. You see, I work in a construction industry where 99.999% of my colleagues are men. So when you are in this environment, it's very difficult to create an environment that is helpful for women. Because most of the time, the men in my industry perceive me as young, unexperienced, foreign woman. So when you add all of this together, it's very difficult to put your point on the table and stand for it. So going back to what triggered that frustration in all of this situation, which is the lack of appreciation, the lack of being um, every time when you have to talk to someone or have to deal with difficult situation, they try to make you feel inferior. So when I found the trigger of my frustration, I now get it started to work on it and change it. So how did I do it? Well, brief, that's the first one. You take a deep breath and you release the tension in your body. And when you release the tension in your body, then you start to listen and you listen what's happening inside you. You start to separate the feelings from the situation. You already know what triggered your frustration, which is in my case is lack of appreciation and infer infer inferiority. And when I realized that and I started to separate that from the specific situation, then I can go back and repeat. And what I mean by repeat is finding one word, one key word that you want to describe that situation or where you want to be or that feeling that you want to feel. So I've started to build a feeling of positiveness. So I start to say to myself, I'm good at my job. I've got to where I've got because I've worked hard enough to get there. So every time I've been put in a difficult situation, I repeat myself. I take a deep breath, I listen, and I repeat how positive I am. To conclude my speech, I suggest you go back to your specific stressful <laughs> situation and try to apply this to see what's happening. Thank you. Thank you, Irina. Before you go, uh, Irina, are you still there? Yeah. Right. You would like to know who or what had the most profound impact on you in 2021? Oh, I would say myself, because you can say everyone around you has a little or more impact as much as you want, but it's only yourself who is doing the change. So 2021, it was myself that motivated to go there, go after I wanted, not only in my workplace, but in my personal life as well in my health life. So the person that motivated me, it was myself. Every time waking up in the morning, telling me that I need to do that because I want to be that person in a couple of years time. So I need to work hard for it. Thank you. Thank you. 
with that, could I please uh, ask the timekeeper to give us a minute so that everybody can give uh, their feedback to Irina? You can do that either here to chat or you can leave a feedback uh, for Irina via Pathways. One minute, right? A minute. Thank you, Luca. Members can give their feedback privately. Um, they just need to click the name of the person and then your feedback will go to the person directly. Although, thank you for giving your feedback, Amaljeet. Okay. <laughs> Our second speaker tonight is Lucy. Lucy's speech is titled, Lucy is giving her icebreaker speech. And this is one of my most favorite segments of Toastmasters. This is when we get to know our new members well. And this is when they properly introduce themselves to the, to the club and they share something amazing or something interesting about themselves. So Lucy is giving her icebreaker speech tonight. And the title of her speech is, life is either a great adventure or nothing. And then in the bracket, she has H and K. Evaluating Lucy tonight is Flora Ruffin. Flora, I invite you to come forward and give us the objectives of Lucy's speech tonight. Flora. Thank you, Madam Postmaster. Um, so Lucy is, as true on the pathway, uh, persuasive influencing. Um, so there are actually 11 learning paths uh, for the benefit of the guests, and you choose uh, the path that you are interested. They all start with the icebreaker, as uh, the Toastmaster explained. And the objective of the speech is to have a first experience of giving a speech in front of an audience, um, introduce um, herself to the club, and also understanding the, the first uh, speech basics, the structure of a speech. Um, so yeah, I also like love the icebreaker, and uh, I'll, I'll wish all of the best to, to Lucy for her first speech um, in our club. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Um, good evening. So life is either a great adventure or nothing. Hélène Kellner. So I was born in 1995 in Paris, not in Brittany. Um, and I would not have imagined that this court uh, will become then part of my life. So after some years uh, in this big city, my parents decided to go back to Brittany. And I grew up in a small village with 500 inhabitants, um, a really unstable phone connection, no public transportation, neither a good internet connection. And life was running smoothly. And as an only child, I had a perfect life. But then came my first adventure. So when I was 11 years old, by a warm summer evening, my parents asked me uh, to come and to sit on the sofa between them. Never, never good. Uh, and then they told me the unexpected. After 11 perfect years, I was told that I was going to have a sister or a brother. And I was just shocked. Uh, I went out of the sofa, ran into my bedroom, lied in my bed, and I just started crying. And to be honest, joy or fear, I still don't know today. Hopefully when she finally arrived, we went well along um, and I haven't seen her for a year now. And I'm looking forward to being able to, giving her, to give her um, a hug. 
So my second adventure will come nine years later. Um, so for years, I've always wanted to, to travel, um, but I was too scared to do it on my own. So I asked some of my friends, but their answer were always the same. Um, so they say, oh, but why do you want to travel abroad? Um, it's useless, plus it's super expensive. So I just decided to wait um, until one day uh, when my mother encouraged me um, to go to London to do a voluntary work. Um, and I will always uh, express gratitude to her for what she did that day. Um, because following that, um, this first experience on my own, um, I did other trips uh, in New Zealand uh, or in the east of Europe from Budapest to Helsinki. Um, and last but not least, um, uh, my third big adventure and perhaps the most crazy things um, I've ever done in my life uh, was when I decided um, to regain my study in the UK. So in January 2020, um, I, I was ready. I passed my TOEFL. I started my uni application. And then two months later, uh, we had COVID. Um, and so for days, weeks, um, I didn't know uh, if I would be able to make it uh, to regain my studies in the UK. Um, um, and, and also I wasn't really sure if it was something I really wanted uh, because what is the point of going abroad uh, to study online and to stay home? So during summer 2020, I received a positive answer from one university. Um, so in September, I decided um, to regain my study. Everything was still online, but I plan uh, to go to the UK in November. But then five days before my initial departure, I had a message from my owner saying that the accommodation I should live in wasn't suitable anymore. Uh, so this time I decided to take a, a step back and instead of going to the UK, I came back home that day. Uh, but then I had a little voice in my head asking what could happen if. Um, and so I decided to try a second time to go to the UK. Uh, and so despite Brexit, COVID, um, I finally landed um, in Manchester in December 2020. Um, so the first few months were hard uh, to adapt to a new environment, a new lockdown, even more online lecture, um, and I finally didn't have any in-person one. But here I am, um, a year older than I was when I arrived, a bit different with all the person I've met along the road. Um, and as I'm always keen to improve myself, I've decided to join Toastmaster uh, to meet people, to improve the way I'm communicated and to be ready for the next adventure. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Lucy. We already know so much about your year and your life. And thank you for using the word of the day, but I cannot let you go unless you share with us what or who had the most profound impact on your life in 2021. I, I will say everyone, that I was able to meet um, because I learned so much for every person I've met. Um, and with the lockdown we had, it was really nice just to meet people uh, and to share different experiences with them. So I don't have any person in, in my head. Thank you, Lucy. Mr. To Mr. Timekeeper, could you give us a minute so that we can give feedback to Lucy? Okay, start. I request everybody to send a private message to Lucy and members, please use pathways if you can to leave her a feedback. Thank you.
one minute. Thank you, Luca. We have only two speeches tonight, so now it's time for us to move on to our evaluations. Our first evaluator is Sumit Singh. Sumit is evaluating Irina's speech. Please welcome to stage Sumit Singh. Hi, everyone. It was a fantastic speech that Irina had provided to, uh, provided to us today. The speech was entitled Understanding Emotional Intelligence. And she was absolutely great when she was expressing her hand gestures and the camera angle was absolutely perfect. I could not fault uh, her for anything uh, like in terms of the hand gestures or in terms of the personal anecdotes that she was telling. The way she started with a question that drawn us all in and make this, made us more interested in the speech. And then she started telling a little bit about how she has been feeling a bit frustrated at work and her personal, uh, uh, personal journey. One of the things that I would tell uh, Irina to improve upon, uh, if I have to tell her to push her story a bit more further is to develop that story a bit, little bit more, create an incident around which um, that, uh, 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 that frustrating thing has occurred and make, make us a little bit more uh, uh, deep into it. Because at the moment, she just mentioned that she was feeling a bit frustrated. But what was the issue? How uh, and how did she react to that? If she can get a, a bit more information over there, I think that would be great. What I loved, uh, what I loved about her speech was the conclusions as well. So it's not just the tips that she had uh, told to us: listen, breathe. But she also concluded all of that information finally when she was leaving that speech with us. One of the things which, which I felt was within conclusion, I thought like she was a bit interrupted by the timekeeper, but um, that was still something uh, that she had endeavored to do. And we should all be, whenever we are uh, giving our speeches, we should be trying to conclude our whole message because five to seven minutes is a big uh, time for the attention span when there are so many speeches going on. So concluding the speech is, is a key thing, especially when you are in a um, competition sort of a area. Apart from that, um, I don't think there is anything that I would rather uh, want to mention. I think I've mentioned most of the personal anecdotes that she had mentioned and, and I absolutely love the speech. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Sumit. What or who had the most profound impact on you in 2021? In 2021, I would say books have a very big impact on me. I had a lot of time on my hand to read books to keep myself motivated because I felt within, uh, within the COVID and uh, all the lockdowns, my motivations were going down. I was uh, uh, at the start of it it, it, it was feeling a bit depressive, to be honest, uh, the things uh, that are happening around me and, uh, and, and, a, and certain, um, uh, like within my family back in India, like there were a few things which were happening and then um, around at work as well. So I thought like I got a bit of solace within books, try to motivate myself and try to reinvent myself whenever I'm feeling a bit down. Thank you, Sumit. Um, I just want to mention that I skipped a step uh, and I did not explain that. So for the benefit of our new members and guests, I'd like to say that usually we have a vote to choose the best speaker of the evening. But since we have only two speakers, we will not be casting our votes because if we have uh, fewer than three, we do not choose a best speaker. And I did not even ask for the times of our speakers. So if Luca could give us the times of our speakers before we move to the next evaluator. Yes, Madam Toastmasters. Um, Irina uh, spoke for seven minutes and 41 seconds. And Lucy 
five minutes and six seconds. Thank you, Luca. It's now time to invite our second evaluator of the evening. That's Flora. Flora is evaluating Lucy's icebreaker tonight. Please welcome Flora. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster. And uh, I'll start with congratulating, um, sorry, Lucy, Lucy for her first icebreaker because it was it was really wonderful to hear about a personality uh, um, story while actually you know learning how to do a speech. So congratulations, Lucy. Um, what I want to do in my evaluation is starting with the commendation, and then I have a few area for improvement to further develop on your skill. Um, so the first thing, the first commendation is the objective is met um, and the speech was really uh, engaging, uh, very clear as well. So the structure was easy to follow. And by giving some personal story, it just also helped the audience to really uh, feel engaged and really resonate with Lucy's story. So that's a great, a great um, skill to have and a, and a strength. Um, what I also like particularly is it was really well structured and very easy to follow. So there was a theme uh, since the title, it started again in the introduction and then through the speech um, that, that you know, we understood what the adventure from Lucy was. So again, that also a very a, a, a great strength. The final strength for me was also Lucy's sense of humor. So I really like um, a note you know, uh, around how she described uh, uh, adventure and for example how she explained she was not too sure if it was joy or fear when she um, found out that she had a, a brother or sister um, and then for example when her parents you know started to sit uh, down with her to tell something I was actually not sure exactly what the parents would be saying I had imagined something else so I thought again that was quite nicely uh, said and uh, with a nice sense of humor um, the other note that I noted, there was a little voice um, that also explained, you know, I, I wanted to go to London and I try and then right when I tried actually, the, um, uh, I, I couldn't get the accommodation. So again, I thought that was really nice way of telling story. Um, where Lucy could improve, I would encourage her to to a next space being stand up, so not, not seated. I think that would give Lucy much more way of uh, using a, a body language and, you know, re-emphasizing point with gesture. Um, and again, you know, the, the sense of humor will even be stronger. Um, I also think um, the conclusion could have been, uh, could reinforce the messages. So I think a link back to the quote would have been a perfect way of ending the speech. Um, but, you know, overall, I love the speech. It was really nice uh, icebreaker to learn about Lucy. The structure was uh, great um, with a lot of personal story, with a lot of sense of humor. Um, and next time I'll encourage Lucy to do that um, standing up and, and then to not forget about the conclusion to finish the speech. Thank you very much. Thank you, Flora. You know the question I'm going to ask you now. <laughs> we would like to know what impacted you or what are your most enduring memories uh, from 2021? Yes, I think in terms of who, who uh, I'm grateful for and who helped me a lot through this uh, year, it was really my mentor. So I never really had a mentor at work. I never really understood, you know, what the purpose of a mentor. Uh, but by, you know, when there's a lot of things happening, um, like COVID and, and all of the a stress that is brought at work, having someone to talk through that actually gives you some perspective that has, you know, had a, um, a higher responsibility and that can, you know, help you to think was really, really helpful when we are going through a lot of changes. Um, so I'm really grateful for this person. I, I also, you know, wonder why, why would you give that time when everyone is so busy? And, but I've learned a lot through, through this person. So I'm really grateful. Thank you, Flora. We are actually much ahead of time um, on our meeting tonight, also because it's a very short meeting. It's going to be a short meeting because we don't have many speakers and we don't have many people attending the meeting tonight. But here's what we should do. I'll invite all our guests to come and introduce themselves to us, tell us what brought them here and tell us something from their lives that happened in 2021 and something they would carry to 2022. 
And then we will take a short network break where we will not be networking with anyone else, but I will be here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And let's, let, let's get ourselves a bit cozy. Make yourself a nice cup of tea or coffee or you know green tea, and then we'll come back and then we'll continue the meeting. But before I do that, I would like to invite Stephen to come forward and tell us a little bit about yourself. Please tell us what brought you here and what, would, what do you remember from 2021? Um, okay. I'm Stephen, everyone. Um, I want to tell you guys, um, I just arrived at London or the UK last week and I have never uh, been to UK before. And I'm from Hong Kong. And due to some situation in Hong Kong, um, these two years, so I decided to come to the UK. I quit my job in September and I uh, went to see many friends before I came to the UK. And because I do not know uh, for how long I can see them again in the future, yes. And the reason I'm here because I know that I'm going to stay in the UK for a long time and I need to fit in the culture and I need to know more people. And um, also I practice my English so I can um, communicate with people easier. Yes, and why I joined this club because um, I'm living in Yiling at the moment and I, I found that in the internet. So um, yeah, that, that's why I joined here. Thank you, Stephen. Sorry, I didn't know that you were already a member. I thought you were attending as a guest. Thank you for telling us about yourself. Um, what do you remember from 2021 that's going to stay with you for life? Um, I remember that there, there were some, um, some incidents happened in Hong Kong, but um, and that's why I decided to come to the UK. And I remember all the faces, all the friends I met before I came to here and all the things they said to me, yes. And I think I will remember them. And even though we can always still communicate in um, on internet, like WhatsApp or email, but yeah. I think their faces, the last meeting I had with them, yeah, they're all in my brain now. Thank you, Stephen. I'd like to invite Kamaljeet now to introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. Uh, as you all know, my name is Kamaljeet, and it's quite interesting how I've ended up joining this class. Um, it was suggested to me by my husband, and he's been to a Toastmasters class because he did a he did an MBA at LBS. So he knew about it. And why he suggested it is because what I find is that when I have to talk in a group, I get a bit, I get a bit shy, I get a bit nervous. And there's a situation which happened, which I'm not going to go into detail. And I spoke to my husband, he was there, I said, you know what, my heart started beating very fast. And he goes, you know what, just join the class, it will really help you. <laughs> and I'm here now, yeah. You made the right decision, Kamal. And you come to the right place, the right club. Okay. So Kamal, anything you remember uh, from 2021 that had the most profound effect on you this year? I did a, um, I did a course earlier this year and it's something which I've been interested in for the last couple of years. And it's all about batch flowers and natural remedies so I think that would be one of the highlights of this year so yeah thank you Kamaljeet okay and we now have Enrika uh, did I say that correctly Enrika yes Enrika yes welcome to the club uh, please tell us about yourself what brought you here today um hi everybody so I um, I recently moved close to Wheeling before I was living in East London. 
um, and so that's like a little bit like Stephen. I wanted to uh, <laughs> to find a little bit more people, and then uh, I was even in East London. I was attending sometimes the Toastmasters there uh, with the London Bridge Group. And I really enjoy this kind of meeting. So I would like to be a bit more regular and maybe to become a member next year. And the reason why, because um, maybe next year I would like to apply for higher positions like director or something like this. And it's important to be a good communicator, more you are going in higher positions. So I would like to improve yeah, these kind of skills <laughs> further and further if it's possible. And I know that you, and this kind of, let's say events, really help in this sense. Thank you, Enrica. And is there anything you'd like to share with us uh, from 2021 that has had a profound effect on you? Um, like Flora, I wanted, I'm very grateful to my mentor. I have a sort of professional mentor and he helped me to transition between two different jobs. And I will start with the new position in January. Um, so without his help, I couldn't really reach anything. <laughs> uh, so I'm, yeah, even if he's not here, I really would like to say to, to him, thank you very much because he was extremely helpful for me. <laughs> thank you for that, Enrica. And I'd like to share with you that at Trojans, we do care about welcoming our new members and we do understand the challenges that a new person might have when they start on the Toastmasters journey. And keeping that in mind, yesterday we had our social, um, the first social in one and a half years, and we launched a mentoring program for our new members. So if you do decide to join Toastmasters, we will not gonna, we are not gonna leave you alone and you know uh, let you fend for yourself and find your way forward. You will be attached to a mentor and we'll help you on your journey to become a better communicator. So we also offer mentoring program at Trojan Speakers Club. So I hope you will make a decision soon and join us as your chosen club, Toastmasters Club. Thank you. And can I find this kind of information in the website or do I have to reach you out? Um, it's not available on the website, but if you do decide to become a member, we will give you, pair you with a buddy or pair with you with a mentor and they will help you along uh, your Toastmasters journey. They will help you um, and they'll answer all your questions about how to give a speech, how to evaluate, how to find your way forward in pathway system, which is the system we follow at Toastmasters. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to your mentor and they will help you become a better communicator. So this is something we offer our members, especially our new members, and uh, that service is there for you to become a better Thank you. communicator. Thank you very much. I think we're going to take a slightly longer break today. Uh, how about we come back in uh, 13 minutes? Uh, let's say, okay, let's make it 15 minutes. Please make yourself uh, a drink, come back. And after that, we are going to have uh, one of my favorite segments of Toastmasters meeting, which is called Table Topics. This section is about impromptu speeches. And tonight the theme is Santa Claus. You will be asked a question and you have to think on your feet and you have to speak for at least a minute. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Don't let the butterflies in your stomach tell you otherwise. Make yourself a drink and come back in 15 minutes. How are you, Sunit? I'm doing all right for how things with you. Oh, good, yeah. I'm looking forward to my holiday or yeah. leave. <laughs> when are you leaving? Um, I'm leaving on Thursday, so I've got holiday, yeah. So I'm going to France for the for Christmas. Nice. Um yeah, and uh yeah, hopefully it's been really, really a good break. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean there is no point being in London to be honest, like for Christmas break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck um, here, but uh, yeah. I've never been in London, actually. I always, you know, because I always like uh, spend Christmas uh, with my parents. Um, I don't think my mum would understand. Actually, once, once we went, I was traveling, I didn't spend Christmas with my parents, and that was the end of the world. <laughs> but uh... <laughs> yeah. How about you, are you having some time off? Yes, uh, later. 
I would be taking like I have quite a few holidays left, so I've like, I'm taking quite a few holidays in December, probably like a uh, 15, 20 uh, days off in December now, starting next week. So I'm yeah. taking a few days off, but like I'm not going anywhere. Uh, there is a bit of a thing like uh, um, like back in India as well. There is a, a, a quarantine and all those restrictions, and my parents are old, so I don't I don't really want to. Like by mistake as well. I don't really want to give them any infection or something because yeah. UK has very high infection rate. But do you normally go? Like, do you normally before COVID, would you just go go there yeah. for Christmas? Yeah. I mean, normally before COVID, like I used to always go in December because like you you get a lot of bank holidays, so you can combine them. <coughs> so it's much easier to go uh, like at this point of time. And the weather is not bad as well. Yeah, like in India, like it's uh, it's much better weather. Oh, so it's a second time, second yeah. year. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Also, but, uh, uh, yeah, tell me. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to talk about yesterday and just ask you if you were if you were ready to go back to physical, if we were going to the church. I mean, uh, like with this Omicron going around, to be honest, like uh, at, at the moment, I'm not very um, clear on that. And as, like there's not a lot of data at the moment like scientists mm. are still looking into it like how bad the things are going to be and I, yeah. I, I don't think like even scientists know at the uh, at this point of time but just as a precautionary like I think like I'm not uh, ready at the moment but maybe in February if the things change yes why not if, yeah I've, yesterday we were talking about members in the past and uh, a few members mentioned your wife that she was yeah. a member of the yeah. club <laughs> and that there was a lot of uh, fun between you and your wife <laughs> <laughs> yeah like uh, when I was a table topics master and I asked her some questions so it was a difficult time like after we went back home <laughs> Yeah, and no, it was it was like funny to be to be there, you know, like it was just like oh, so real, really. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, have we found like some of the boxes upstairs, you know, to, just to prepare the room and everything? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a bit of logistic to to think um, before before really coming back. Yeah. So I hope we can talk about that at the committee meeting next week. I don't know if you both can attend, or three of you can attend on Wednesday. Next that week. should be fine with me. <coughs> that is, it should be fine next week. Sorry, when is the next meeting? Um, on Wednesday. If and somewhere. that is, which day is it? Uh, the 15th. The 15th, okay. We don't have an evaluator tonight, top, topics evaluator. Maybe. Uh, you, are you okay to do it? <coughs> Yes, I volunteered for it. Sorry, sorry, I missed that, Sumi. So uh, I volunteered for it. Like Mo asked me if I can do it. Okay, okay, because I thought I could also do it. So, but okay, if fine. if you can do it, please, uh, like, please be my guest. <laughs> please, please really? do it. <laughs> yes. To me, the extra opportunity for you to polish your evaluation skills. No, no, no. Uh, like, uh, I think like one evaluation, uh, like in the evening, is uh, good enough for me. Are you sure? Okay, fine. Um, what do you say, Madam President? Yeah, no, I, I uh, to you, really. I didn't know, Nisha, because you're always, already doing quite a lot, but if you feel up for it, absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> okay, I think I'm all right. I can do that. So, Nisha, you don't have Christmas. Uh, I thought you were going to be very Christmassy today. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is. I don't see any hint of uh, color red anywhere on anyone's screen, or not <coughs> I'm a fan of red on Christmas because I think Coca-Cola has completely hijacked and monopolized and exploited Christmas and turned it uh, turned it red. And our future generations will never know that Santa actually never wore red before the uh, really yes. Uh, it was I think in the 1920s or something, and not just Coca-Cola. There was another company who, um, on purpose, marketed and peddled 
and associated color red with uh, with Christmas and with Santa. <coughs> so Santa would traditionally wear something in green and red. It would be a combination, and there would be some green, but it was not primarily red as we see today. So um, actually, we were out today the whole day, and we just walked in, and I had quickly had some food, and then I turned on the <laughs> and yeah. So I'm I'm wearing red lipstick. So that's my contribution. <laughs> what about you i see tinsel in the background yeah but the same i just yeah it was just a bit oh, oh. <laughs> oh, wow. oh nice nice that's a beret Never. i'm just trying different. to find something red <coughs> i had to iron the christmas jumper and then didn't have time so but we are doing christmas jumper at work on friday nice not that we yes. would have noticed any wrinkles in your jumper on zoom <laughs> <laughs> wait you missed a great party last night ask luca if i'm wrong yeah yeah, yeah. it's great, great yeah so funny <laughs> i would have loved to hear sumit's two truths and a lie though <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no actually uh, i saw the pictures and like uh, uh, it looked pretty well attended as well so it was quite nice I think in the big hall it didn't feel like a lot of people were there but there were 13 of us plus two kids and I mean given the circumstances I think like it was uh, still pretty well attended if you uh, if, if you have a look at it I think it was like close to 50% or maybe more yeah 13 guests plus two kids okay. were just running around on <laughs> I think we had two dropouts in the end um at okay. the last minute um and then, yeah, we were thinking Riverside uh, would would have a few member coming, but there was other things going on over there, so they didn't come. I heard from a Riverside member who wanted to come. I'm not going to disclose their name because that, things might get awkward in future. Okay. But they said that uh, this extra requirement of doing the lateral flow test put them off. <laughs> uh, we, Is that yes, yes. And um, actually, they said that uh, they got busy. They were out, outdoors and they didn't have time. And then they wanted to bring a guest with them. And then that meant they also needed to do it. So it, it just... It I mean, if this would have been March 2020, like you can understand that. Like in, in, uh, in December 2021, if you're saying that lateral flow test, which is available for free in a pharmacy and required almost, almost everywhere. I think it was the convenience, not the cost. Obviously it's for free. Uh, but the fact that you had to probably stop somewhere and do it because the person was outdoors and with uh, their sister and they wanted to come but then having to source it sit down somewhere do it oh. send a picture they just thought but then you know what they're lost they <laughs> <laughs> they missed out on a good party so yeah well what about if we do it each time we have a meeting <laughs> in the winter no pain no gain so if this becomes our new normal <coughs> unless people start quoting and uh, throwing Boris Johnson's name in our face uh, I <laughs> expect you know the party that never was or the meeting that never was <laughs> oh yeah that's so funny I mean funny I make me laugh <laughs> Uh, if, I mean, this is this has turned into dark humor. I mean, I would find it funny if it wasn't for the deaths of thousands of people in this country. No, absolutely, absolutely. I think it's more the way they talk about it, and um, yeah, the complete hypocrisy, and yeah. Well, let's not discuss politics, but <laughs> yeah, but at least you know um, they they didn't try to share a you know fake photo or say that I've done it, but I don't have the photo or anything. So at least they respected our rule and um, decided uh, they, they couldn't come if they couldn't follow the rule, which is fine. But we missed you, Sumit. I was actually hoping to see you yesterday. Yeah, well, <laughs> probably next time. <laughs> well, hopefully I, I, I won't be there. So I'm, I'm moving away in three months, unfortunately. So have a great party next year. So is it all decided for you, Nishta? Yeah, yeah, we've, we've bought a house. So, I mean, we've, in fact, we are quite close to finishing the process and moving into the new property in three months. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
The funny thing is, it turns out that Satya is also looking to move to that mm -hmm. area, and it's possible that we we might be neighbors. So, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Small I mean, world. Yeah, they they are interested in a property which is like a, a block away from where we are moving, and uh, we would be joining the same the new Toastmasters club in Amesbury. So which I'm told is actually the oldest club in England. So it has that, it is historical. It's not the friendliest club in London, but. <laughs> it's outside London. So, okay, maybe you could say the friendliest club outside London. <laughs> but I saw Trojan was the friendliest club in the world. Was it? Well, that's what I hear someone, some people say. And now that you mention it, it rings a bell. Does it? Yeah. Okay. But that's a very tall claim. It's like every club has been surveyed and they decided they were not the friendliest. <laughs> or Trojan one. No, I wouldn't make that claim. But we are the one of the friendliest guests if you're here on the call and listen to the conversation. As you can figure out from our conversation we we have this you know camaraderie and we are, we are quite you know we are a happy and friendly bunch of people and we like to have a laugh sorry next meeting so next wednesday no oh, that's sorry. committee meeting sorry that's not uh, the toastmasters meeting ah, okay so for sorry, uh, confused you for the men okay for the committee members, uh, we discuss the club affairs. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so secretly talk about other members behind their back. <laughs> <laughs> so for us, this one is the last meeting of the year. Yes, it is, okay. yes. And okay. when do we meet again, uh, 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 Flora? Um, so that it's 12th be... of January. 12th of January, okay. Maybe I should have. The 12th, yeah? The yeah. 12th of January, which is well, the second Wednesday of the of the month. Second and fourth Wednesday of the month. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll resume the meeting in a minute once everybody has come back. And I think we've already two speeches. I think Nishta, you are you speaking, no? On the I haven't booked anything. No, you haven't. Okay. It's two um, speeches. Am I am I on the agenda? I, I don't know. Rupa Maybe at and two speeches. So who is on the agenda? Rupa and Anani. Ah, okay. Anani. Momo, uh, did you make a list of all the mentors and mentees <coughs> by any chance? I, I since yeah, I was you in a group, isn't it? Tanul, she didn't got anyone. So any new member who is joining in, we can pair with him. So Tanuj got somebody. No. When he picked, he got Cam. And I think he was picking up for somebody. Joanna, I think. And then no, Joanna, Joanna has the group up. Yes. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll discuss that. I think time to resume our meeting. Is everyone back uh, with a nice warm drink? Great. Great. <laughs> Let's dive back into our meeting. This is the second part of our meeting. And before we start the table topics, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the segment uh, to prepare you. And um, so th in this section, we, uh, we think on our feet. This is the impromptu speech section. You are given a question. And the truth is you are not obliged to answer the question in the manner it has been asked. So you can completely flip it on its head. You can say, I like the question, but I have decided to say something else. The idea is to be able to speak for at least a minute. Take a deep breath if that, uh, if that scares you or makes you anxious, as Kamalji pointed out. Uh, you can speak about anything in the world. You can relate it to the question. There are no right or wrong ways of answering your table topics question, but try to speak for at least a minute. And I'm sure we can do that. Imagine you're sitting in your living room, talking to a family member on a topic or a question they have asked you. 
So try to speak for a minute and um, Luca will give us the, the time indication. So keep an eye on uh, Luca's frame. And with that, I'd like to invite Molly, our Table Topics Master for the evening. Please welcome Molly. Greeting Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster and guests. The purpose of the Topic Master is to facilitate table topics where guests and members will have the opportunity to practice their impromptu speaking. I will introduce a topic and call on speaker who will be given two minutes to speak on the subject. So I would like to call uh, Steve. First question is, if you have a chance to become a Santa, what will you do? Santa. Um, okay. Um, I don't know how to um, answer this question, but I can talk something else related to this question. Santa. When I heard of Santa, this word, because I used to uh, stay in Australia for a while, uh, for a period of time, a few years. And every summer, uh, sorry, every Christmas is summertime in Australia. So when, when we go to the, uh, went to the beach, we saw some Australian guy there wearing shorts with the long red cloth and putting the hat on in um in 30 or 40 degree on the beach keep saying um merry christmas to people and it is quite funny when usually the santa the santa claus up there usually um in winter time we can think of the snowing but in australia no we can only think of the, the summer and it is really um sunburned on them in every christmas and i think it is quite a uh, funny story a uh, funny um situation you can imagine of, yes. Oh, that's it, thank you. I would like to call second speaker, Andrika. So your question is, have you ever wrote any letter to Santa? If yes, what was your wish if you are comfortable to hear. Um, <laughs> so actually, I'm coming from Italy and from my region. So I'm coming from Northwest uh, Italy. And in my region, we don't celebrate Santa Claus, but we celebrate um, San Nicolo, it's called. So it's a different Santa, let's say. <laughs> it's a little bit before. It was a few days ago, the 6th of uh, December. And um, I didn't really uh, write any letter because we don't really use to do this kind of procedure with this kind of scent. But what I was always saying was, I was like, um, when I was, I was, of course, when I was a kid, I was in my room um, and uh, with the dark. And I was always imagining what I really wanted from our Santa Claus, let's say. So I was imagining and dreaming all the things that really I wanted to have. But all the time I was dreaming something a little bit strange, like I wanted to have a living horse, for example. <laughs> of course, it was not really possible because we were living in a flat. Or I wanted to become uh, a person who was climbing the mountains. You know, this kind of very strange presents that, of course, I never received. But anyway, I was happy anyway with all my presents, uh, the 6th of December. Uh, so yeah, this is a sort of memory I wanted to share with you all. And that's it from me. I would like to speak uh, Kamaljit. So your question is, how many Santa movie have you seen and which one do you like? Um, I've seen a recent one with my children and there were two parts to it. So I watched the first one. So that would probably be my most favorite as it's the only one I've seen. Um, the most fun part was being able to just spend that time with the children, have some popcorn, crisps, snacks, and just sit together with them and watch the movie. And as you know, 
when we're younger, we enjoy this more. So my youngest son, he's eight years old, and he has watched that movie many times over. And I think he's probably watched it 10 times and he can probably continue watching it again and again. Um, yeah, so I can't remember the name of the movie. Um, I think it's Christmas Chronicles actually. And it's very magical, the sort of stuff we see at Christmas time, Santa doing all this fun stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll probably watch it again on the weekend if he has his choice of what we're gonna watch as a family. Um, that's it, thank you for listening everyone. Now I would like to call Flora. The question is, what was the gift you received on a Christmas that made you extremely happy? Thank you, Madam Turbot Topic Master. Can I just make sure I understood the question? What is uh... what was the gift you received on a Christmas that made you extremely happy? Thank you. Thank you for repeating. Um, that's a really lovely question. Um, I love gift um, and I actually love love when it's surprise gift. So, you know, when you um, wait, wait for the Christmas Eve. So in France, we do the present on a Christmas Eve or actually when we don't. Yeah. When there's no children, it's true that it has changed at my in my family as we have now I have now uh, children on my sister's side but when you're waiting for that moment and there's all of the present um, uh, next to the Christmas tree and you start thinking oh I'm not too sure uh, you know what I will have um, and then you you open a present and you try to guess I try you know to guess before opening and then you just have the gift that actually you just want right now so um, often it will change, so I don't think I have a perfect gift, but I, what I really, really like is thinking that, you know, someone in my family, for example, my sister, has, has been thinking, you know, very hard on how to find the perfect gift for me, and the fact that actually she most of the time managed uh, some of my mum, you know, no, I, I really like that, and it's particularly true as we're not, you know, living a long time together, so I live in London, they are living in France, so we don't spend a lot of time, but somehow they always find something that will really, really work for me, and I, I'm really grateful for that, and that's always my perfect gift. Thank you very much. Next question, I would like to call Sumit Singh. If you come to know Santa is recruited by someone, then would you like to apply for the Santa job? If yes, then why? If no, then why? Just so that like I've heard the question right, like if I'm recruited as a Santa, yeah. would I would like to apply for that job or not? Madam Topics Master, Trojans, and most welcome friends. If, I have, if I'm uh, getting an opportunity to apply for a job of a Santa Claus, I think I would take it at any given time. It is one of the best jobs, which gives you a lot of uh, happiness and gratitude. It is, a, uh, it, is a, uh, it is a time of the year, which is quite cold. I, I can understand that, and that may put off a lot of people. But I think the happiness that you would be getting in that festive sort of a time where you can go into any house, probably eat some nice food over there. Also, uh, you can go around the world, meet people from all different cultures, meet people from all different um, uh, uh, color, creed, and geography. I think that would be the best uh, uh, opportunity for me. I can understand there would be a lot of problems in logistics, getting all the gifts, going to different places in the cold. That might, that is something I'm aware of, but have, in spite of all, of all of these odds, I think I'm up for the job and I would be applying uh, to that job as soon as possible. Madam Topics Master. I would like to call next question, Lucy. People believe Santa lives in a North Pole. 
would you like to go to the search for Santa on North Pole? If, if I understood well, is uh, the question is, would I want to search for, for Santa Claus? Yeah. Um, North Pole. No, no. Um, when I was a child, one of the best thing, one of the things I really like uh, was the days before Christmas, um, just waiting, Santa Claus waiting uh, to see the family. Um, and when when I was younger, I really thought that uh, Santa Claus uh, existed. Um, because for me, it was just a, a wonderful time, uh, a wonderful uh, guy uh, was coming just like that in every houses. Um, so I will say yes, definitely. You uh, need to go um, and to search for him. I know that um, a few years ago when my sister was younger, um, you, you had this application on Google uh, to see where the Santa, Santa Claus was. Um, so we connected uh, and, and we try and, and we look where he was. Um, so just to, to summarize, yes, if I had the opportunity, I, I would definitely go just uh, at least to see the landscape. Thanks a lot. Next question, I would like to call Ms. Nishtha. Why Mrs. Claus always get mad at Santa? I'm evaluating the table topics, but I will take the question. Could you repeat the question? Sorry, buddy. Why Mrs. Claus always get mad at Santa? I think... Mrs. Santa is Punjabi. What else? Or I should say that maybe Mr. Santa is Punjabi. Maybe he doesn't do his job properly. While he's very busy trying to make the entire world happy, he doesn't know how to um, take care of his brush's beard. Oh, where have I kept the, the list of all the gifts? And it's actually Mrs. Claus who's having to clean up after him and uh, prepare make mate and making sure that the sleigh has its MOT cleared there is enough fuel in the sleigh he has counted all the gifts for all the children in the world so it sounds like that Mr. Santa could do with a bit of discipline and that's why Mrs. Santa needs to do her job which is to make sure that Mr. Santa takes care of all of these things and does not disappoint any child in the world on Christmas day. So if it wasn't for Mrs. Santa, we wouldn't be welcoming and offering milk and mince pies to Mr. Santa. So next time you're writing a letter to say thank you, do not forget to thank Mrs. Santa for doing her job because Mr. Santa is able to do his job because of her discipline. Sorry, I completely bumbled this up, but that's why she's bad at him all the time. Next question, I would like to call Momo. The question is, what would be your reaction if you come to know that Donald Trump is a Santa? What would be my reaction if I come to know Donald Trump is a Santa? Uh, honestly, I don't like him and I reject everything what he does. So I don't know if I'm even going to approach to him or I'm not sure, but I need to think about it now <laughs> because I really oppose whatever he does. So I don't like him and I, do, I disagree with every action of what he does. So. Yeah, so I need to think about your question now. What am I going to do if he is a Santa? Madam Dosmost. We have any more questions, Molly, or are you are you done? 
I think all members questions finished. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, very entertaining questions. I wish I had gotten the last one. And if I had, then I would have said I would run in the opposite direction because Trump can never be Santa. Snake, yes. So I have one never. more question. Uh, Molly, we'll have to keep. Do you know what is the favorite food of Santa? Uh, since we do not have any more members, I would say yeah. let's let's uh, conclude our table topic sec section here. And um, before I launch into the evaluation, uh, could I please ask Luca to give us the times of all the time tab uh, table topic speakers? Thanks, Madam Toastmasters of the evening. And uh, this is the times. Stephen, one minute, 16 seconds. Enrica, one minute, 29 seconds. Kamal Kamalshit, one minute, 17 seconds. Flora, one minute, one minute, 40 seconds. Sumit, one minute, 38 seconds. Lucy, one minute, 16 seconds. Nishta, one minute, 38 seconds. Momo, 44 seconds. Back to you, Madam Toastmasters. Thank you, Luca. And Molly, I'll invite you back on the stage. Uh, we haven't asked you the question that I've been asking everybody. Who or what has uh, given you the most profound memories uh, in 2021? Uh, 2021 is the best year in my life because my childhood dream come in this year. I want to uh, I want to go abroad in since my childhood and this year uh, I came to UK and I live in uh, UK and other another opportunity to join uh, Toastmaster Club. And I met new members and new friends in my family. And it is very good opportunity to me. And uh, yesterday I enjoyed very much a very, very big party. And I met uh, Flora, Nishta and Luca and uh, Momo and Lucia. And I am very, very thankful to 2021 to get a good opportunity thank you thank you molly and that was for <clears throat> for sumi <clears throat> i now he realizes what he has missed yesterday right um i have taken on the role of table topics evaluator um i will start with stephen stephen i'm sorry i didn't get a chance to write down your question but i wanted to give you this feedback you started without hesitation and you dive right into your answer. You showed great confidence. Your delivery was well paced. So well done on that. And it, uh, you also had good use of hand gestures. So next time, if you asked a question, you would like to see a bit of vocal variety. And um, I hope using that, you can enhance your answer next time even more. Next, we had Enrica who was asked, have you ever written a letter to Santa? Just like Stephen, she also dived right into her answer without any hesitation. And now we know that she wanted a living horse and several other things, but she couldn't afford them. She couldn't have them because she lived in an apartment. One piece of commendation, uh, recommendation um, for Enrica, try not to have any object in your hands, such as a stick or a pen, because that tends to distract the audience from what you're saying. So next time when you are asked to uh, speak, uh, leave the pen or the object on the table and try to speak without, without holding anything. Then we had Kamaljeet who was asked, how many Santa movies have you seen? And I must say that all the guests have taken on board my advice to speak for at least a minute. And I can see that everybody has done great. Everybody st stuck to that rule. So well done and congratulations to all of you. And here Kamaljeet, started very confidently. She was eloquent. She used the story of her eight-year-old and I could relate to her as a mom because my son also likes to watch the same movies a thousand times. And uh, in the beginning, I wanted to know the name of the movie. And I was thinking that if she could tell us, that would be great. But then she uh, confessed that she couldn't remember. And then she made a valiant uh, effort to summon the name. And now we know what the name of the movie was. 
only one piece of commendation uh, to a recommendation to Kamaljeet. See if you can have more light in the room, uh, especially facing you, a source of light facing you, because it um, we could not see your face, your facial expressions. To have better eye contact with the audience, I know this is Zoom and it's not the ideal place for a Zoom uh, Toastmasters meeting, but have a well lit room so that we can see your facial expressions. Then we had uh, Flora. What was the gift that made someone extremely happy? Uh, Flora used the, the tactic that we all uh, shamelessly <laughs> use, which is to ask the question again. This allows you to buy some more time. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, you should always, always ask the Toastmaster to Table Topics Master to repeat the question. It gives you some precious seconds, extra seconds to think about your answer. So that was a great uh, tactic and I encourage everybody to use it. Um, she um, again gave a very nice um, answer to the question. She talked about family. Christmas is a time when we think about our family and it feels like spending time with the family is the greatest gift. Uh, one piece of commendation to Flora, recommendation to Flora, uh, which is uh, we would like to have uh, a little more vocal variety in your answers next time when you um, use more hand gestures and have vocal variety and take more pauses, it can enhance your speech. Then we had Sumit. Will you apply to be recruited as Santa? And I must say, Sumit, I loved your answer. Your delivery, the way you answer the question, why you would want to be Santa, what the logistics would be. And I think that is the manager, the, the MBA guy, the guru in you who couldn't help think about the logistics, but it was a good answer. I actually do not have any recommendation for you. I truly enjoyed your answer. Then we had Lucy. Would you go searching for Santa at North Pole? And here I'd like to highlight something. Whenever you start your answer, your table topics question with a story, it draws everyone in. So when you, when you tell a personal story, you have everyone's attention because we all love stories. So she had my attention from the very first sentence. She told a personal story and um, she talked about what it meant, um, wh what her childhood experiences were with Christmas and with Santa. One piece of recommendation to Lucy, um, again, this is not the ideal uh, place to have a Toastmasters meeting, but when you are on Zoom call in a Toastmasters meeting, I would uh, advise you to look into the camera. So when you're looking, um, it's, it looks a bit like shifty eyes. So when you're looking here, 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 and everywhere and not into the camera, we are not able to establish good eye contact with you. So try to look into the camera next time. I'll skip myself completely. And now it brings me to Momo. What will you do if you discover Trump was Santa? And while I totally <laughs> uh, understand her frustration and her uh, the intensity of her feelings towards Trump, um, I would have expected her to still carry on speaking for at least a minute, even if it was to express your frustration, your anger, and why you think he cannot be Santa or he shouldn't be Santa, you could have actually carried on and uh, talked to us or told us about why you think um, or why you don't like him since it was a political question, but when it comes to Trump, I think we do not have any rules. Uh, so this was only 44 seconds. So Momo, you, you've, you're an experienced uh, table topic speaker. So next time, let's see if we can hit the clock uh, for at least a minute. With that, I hand it back to myself since I'm the Toastmaster. Uh, table toastmaster. Um, Luca, could you give us the times of all the evaluators? That was Sumit, Flora, and myself. Thank you, Madam Toastmasters. Um, the time of the evaluations was Sumit for Irina, two minutes, 44 seconds. Uh, Flora for Lucy, um, three minutes and four seconds. 
Madame Toastmaster Nishta for the um, table topics, six minutes and 32 seconds. Back to you, Madame Toastmaster. Thank you, Luca. Now I'd, I'd request you to uh, vote for your favorite table topics speaker and for your favorite evaluator to make it uh, transparent and impartial. Uh, please send your uh, all the names to uh, Luca. Are you okay to take all the names? All the. I think so, we need two people, no? Because otherwise, maybe Molly can have the. It's twenty-one hours. Okay. Yes. So okay. So please send your best table topic speaker to Molly. And uh, for the best evaluator, please uh, send it to Luca. Yeah, and and I would <laughs> I would advise you to be very careful and do not um, type the name when uh, in the in the Zoom chat. If you see everyone, that means your choice is visible to everybody. So please go to Luca's name, select it, send him your choice of the best evaluator, and then select Molly's name and send her your choice of best table topic speaker. Luca and Amoli, please send the names of the winners to um, Flora, our president. Molly and Luca, please let us know once you have uh, all the works so that we can continue with the meeting. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm a bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> we have time today, Luca, don't worry. I send it to Flora. Maybe we should continue with the meeting uh, while Luca sends the name of the winner to Flora. Uh, looking at the agenda, we have actually come to the end of our meeting. I asked everybody to, requested everybody to use the word gratitude in their speeches. And I'm happy to report that Sumit and Lucy, and uh, yes, yeah, Sumit and Lucy use the word gratitude unless I have not paid attention and missed you out on the, the usage. Thank you very much. And uh, with that, I will share what I am grateful for in 2021. In 2021, I'm actually grateful for something, an event that took place even before I was born, even before my parents met. And that is uh, the disaster that struck Apollo 13 on the 13th of April, 1970. Um, I discovered a podcast in January this year, and this was a time I had slipped into a dark hole. It had seriously affected my mental health, 
COVID, lots of things. And I started listening to that podcast called 13 Minutes to the Moon. If you are into podcast listening, I highly recommend that. That story of a huge disaster because Apollo 13 was destined to land on moon, but it never did. And they had an explosion. And at one point, everybody thought the astronauts are not gonna make it back. In NASA's history and in the history of space uh, travel, uh, space probes, Apollo 13 is known as the successful failure. It changed my perspective about myself, about how I look at failure and how I look at success. And I realized that Apollo 13 did not fail to land on the moon. It succeeded in splashing back and bringing back the astronauts alive. That was the human, the indomitable human spirit. And it has become my, my compass. So every time I slip back into the hole, I think everything is dark and I can't move forward. I think about Apollo 13 and it brings me back. It reminds me of my, my goal and that I cannot give up. So I'm actually thankful for the people who made the podcast and the great scientists and engineers at NASA who brought back Apollo 13. If you're interested, I highly recommend that. So this rediscovering that event many years before I was born is the thing I'm thankful for in 2021. With that, I will hand it to our president. It's the end of my role and she can conclude the meeting. And this is also the last meeting of, our, uh, of this year. Back to our president. Thank you, Nishta. Thank you for that well-run meeting and thank you for all of you to share your thoughts about 2021, what you are grateful for, and uh, yeah, expanding a bit, a bit more on the, your journey in 2021. That was really great, and I love Nishta your conclusion. Also, it's quite a deep one, so <laughs> it's difficult to to move on, I think. But uh, we'll go now with the award. So the award is when we are um, seeing, you know, who uh, says a bit of competition. I so apologize. You... Sorry to interrupt you. I have just seen the messages. Momo is the Hawk Master. <coughs> um, okay. Oh, well, right. okay. I, I, my sincerest apologies to you, Momo. I, I was actually still following the previous agenda and I apologize to you, Flora. So <coughs> maybe more, more so what, what we can do before going to the award is we can actually be tested and see if, how well we've listened to this meeting. So, Momo, do you want to ask a question? And explain a bit more about this role so that everyone understands what this is about. Thank you, Madam. <laughs> uh, master role is uh, mainly to test how well did we listen? And yeah, I'm the Nishta kept it secret to introduce uh, at the end of the meeting, but when she handed to Flora, I'm, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> maybe she was following the whole agenda. So I've got a few questions. Uh, let me test your listening skill now. Yeah. Ooh. What was the uh, Irina primary feeling? Anyone has got the answer? Is it frustration? Yes, it is. Which vegetable arena look like when she is in frustration? Anyone? Tomato. Oh, sorry? I think it was tomato. Yeah, yes, it is. Tomato. And how long was Lucy's speech? Five minutes, 13 seconds. Five minutes and six seconds. And what was three adventure that uh, Lucy had?
So can we say once? So going to London, going to the UK? Yes, it is one. And there were another two more. Having a baby sister? Yes. And one more, one more to go. Yes. Three of them. Correct. Uh, and which movie Kamal did watch with her child, with her children? Christmas Chronicles 2. Yes. <laughs> and what does Mr. Santa need to do to make Mr. Santa happy? To be more organized? Pay attention to him. To be more organized and to have discipline, yes. More sensitive. Uh, yeah, that, that is all my question. And back to you, Madam Toastmaster. I will hand it to uh, our president. Thanks, Momo. <laughs> and thanks to everyone for answering those difficult questions. Um, so yeah, we, we another question is actually who won those awards? So uh, what do we do? We do a bit of a noise, um, just like that, uh, to just bring the suspense about who won the best evaluator and that award go to Nishta. Well done, Nishta. Thank you. <laughs> and then the second uh, competition is about best table topic speaker. So have you guessed who won the best table topic speaker tonight? And this is Summit. Well done, Summit. Summit, you feel like, oh, another one. <laughs> So, Summit is, okay. is one of our best um, topic speaker. <laughs> well done. Um, what I would do just as a, a conclusion, so first of all, yeah, it's, it's our last uh, meeting of the year, so um, we're going to uh, start again next year. We're going to continue online um, in January, and then we are looking or organizing to go back to physical meeting if we can. Um, depending on what's happening uh, with, with, with COVID development. But if we can, we'll aim to, to start again um, in February. Um, having been back to the church um, yesterday, I just realized that there's a bit more logistic when you actually meet uh, physically. Um, so we have to you know, set up the room, um, prepare, prepare certain things that actually we don't do online. So we don't have a certain of arm at the moment in the club. And that's normally that the person that we come a bit earlier in the evening and, and help with the setting. So I quite like last um, um, yesterday when actually there was um, a few additional helpers. So not just a committee was organizing the social, but a few of us um, have you know, volunteered to help. And that really make a big, big difference because actually there's quite a lot of things that happen, even like we were going with Luca picking up the food and you know, having a driver would have made such a big difference. Um, counting you know, the, the number of people that joined the meeting, uh, like Lucy did as well, made, made a big difference. So I was hoping to propose actually, you know, if, if, if any of you, want to uh, contribute and help from time to time as a certain of them, that would be a good a good way as well of helping the club. So I'll send further communication, but that's something we'll, 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 uh, we'll work on um, in the next few weeks. Um, and then, yeah, so it's the last meeting. So I just want to wish um, all of you a very nice festive season uh, period. I hope you will have a bit of a break. Um, if you are working through the season, I hope you know you you'll have a, still a great time, a lot of fun, a lot, of, and you you, know, you you take as well a bit of time of reflecting on the 2021 years and uh, and looking forward to 2022. Um, and I hope I'll, I'll see you um, next year, all happy and you know coming, volunteering, uh, taking speeches, and and participating. How does it feel? Does everyone wants to do that? Any concluding thought? Any? Just had um, one question. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't fully understand. Like, if how do we join, and then do we have a mentor, and when do we? How does it all work? I, just to understand it a bit more. 
Yes, so Summit is actually our uh, VPM, so it's Vice President for Membership. So after the meeting, it will actually contact you and send you a bit more information in terms of you know, the membership and how, how you can join. Uh, so there is a form, a form to, to fill uh, if you want to join, and then there's a, a small fee as well to pay as a, as a membership. Um, and then it can give you a bit more on the program. And then when you're onboarded, what we've learned is actually yeah, a mentor, so someone that helps you going through, through the program. But a lot of the support is actually through the member, so through participating, so coming to the meeting twice, twice a month. Um, and then you get to understand a bit more about, you know, how, how the meeting are run and get confidence. So the, we have actually a, a few new members like uh, Luca, Molly and Lucy that have recently joined. So I don't know, Molly, Luca or Lucy, if you want to add anything, what's, what was, was it to start joining? What was your tip in terms of joining? I would say just go for it. Don't ask yourself too much too much question. And I will say that if your husband encourages you to go, just listen to him and, <laughs> and come along. <laughs> he wants to join the class as well. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's just, just fun. Well, and... First day, I was very much hesitated. Now I am friendly and speak a little bit. That's a very good club i think so so much friends here thank you how has been the experience for you luca yes just start as uh, lucy uh, said and ask to submit and everything is coming so very good <laughs> okay great and Stephen, Enrique, do you have any question? Any thought? How do you think the meeting went? Oh. Thanks to the meeting went very smooth. And I, I could listen many stories from all, all of you. And I'm happy to join because, um, yeah, as, as <coughs> uh, Nishita said, the club is the friendliest. So uh, it is fun. Yes, and may may I know is it um if I'm joining this club um is it okay I I'm also going to another club too at, at the same time. I think you can join more than one club uh, at a time. Oh. Depends upon oh, how much okay. time do you have. So, okay. like, <laughs> no, like uh, like we have people in the past who were member of like two clubs because they uh, they really want to focus on their public speaking. So uh, they used to come to this club in, on Wednesdays and they used to go to another club on Thursdays or uh, like alternate Wednesdays. So they can find uh, like uh, um, different clubs if, if, if it is not a clash and you are able to manage your personal time, then why not? And uh, like uh, when you are joining Toastmasters, you have to pay uh, like some registration fees and then, uh, then there is some monthly fees. When you're joining the second club, you don't have to pay the registration fees again. You can just, uh, you have to just pay the monthly fees for the second club. So there is some rebate that you get of joining the second club as well. Although here I'd like to add to what Sumitha said. In fact, you are under no obligation to join another club. When you become a member of Toastmasters, you can actually walk into any Toastmasters club in the world so long as you're a paying member and you can participate or give speeches in that club. As a guest, you can attend as many meetings in any Toastmaster club as you like, but then you will not be able to um, give any, deliver any speeches or learn or be paired with a mentor. But as a paying member, you can go to Siberia, Mongolia, Japan, anywhere, and you can actually attend a meeting there as a, as a member. So um, if you want to join two clubs, yes, you, you're most welcome. But then even if you were with just us, the Trojan Speakers Club, you can still attend meetings in other clubs in London, uh, in Hammersmith or Zoom, uh, Zoom clubs anywhere in the world. So it, it allows you this huge access to a massive pool of people and Toastmasters and speakers all over the world. So you can actually connect with anyone you like. Okay, thanks for telling.
Great. Well, thank you very much for coming and uh, yeah, have a lovely, lovely festive season and Merry Christmas uh, to all of you. Thank you. Thank Enjoy, you. everybody. Thank you. See you Bye. in the future. Bye. 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 Happy Christmas, Bye. all of you. And you. Bye. Bye-bye.